strongly believe what we seek from here is the less Hey, what's up everybody? Um Yeah, yeah. Um today's the 12th episode of our weekly program and we're going to have uh my friend Fabio. Um he's a filmmaker. He's an awesome dude and I'm going to put him live. <laughs> Yo yo yo. Hey. hey, hey. How What's are you? Up? You good? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, brother. Um first of all, uh, I hope you don't mind we do this in English so everybody No, no, absolutely. Understand. Yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah, that's um, cool. And uh another thing, dude. Thank you for for yeah, for making this possible, dude. Like for accepting my invitation. Yeah, man. Of course. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Um you know, to join your uh, weekly show um yeah it's it's a great 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 honor did uh first of all man um for people that might not know you uh and because this is going to be like then uploaded to IGTV and YouTube um mm -hmm. do a little uh introduction of yourself a little bio and uh and then we go through the subject of the conversation okay that sounds good uh so my name is uh Fabio Mota and i'm a portuguese uh, dop uh filmmaker and uh i'm i'm currently based in in london in the uk even though i'm originally from porto although right now i'm actually living in austria uh in vienna and not in <laughs> in london because of covid and uh, well opportunities i guess but um yeah i've uh, studied two years i've done my masters in two, for two years at the uh, nfts in in the uk where I've uh, focused on cinematography and since then I've been working as a cinematographer in uh, commercials and music videos documentaries uh, and trying to jump into in fiction obviously and trying to jump into bigger fiction jobs as a DOP and yeah and often collaborate with my good friend Nelson because I followed his musical project from the beginning um and yeah we've just been uh, collaborating i guess for a while <laughs> <laughs> now that's that's fantastic bro like mm. and that's that's what we're going to talk about today like the the music videos you did and um what's like the impact of a video in a song also we're going to go through these two topics mainly um mm -hmm. and then yeah. we can like it's still a talk we're still yeah. <laughs> to talk forever how have you been how have you been anyway i'm oh, very man. happy that you've had been doing this show it's uh, it's been keeping you super occupied eh oh man it's 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 good dude it's good to to like talk with different people have a lot like have like different people as well like watching the conversation and participating it's yeah. good i feel like it's been like um learning process for me and for everybody that is like participating and watching the show and like because I'm trying to educate people on a lot of this different subjects like the subjects that I can't uh talk about I'll put someone talking about them you know that's my yeah. aim and it's basically to give people the opportunity to express themselves uh that's yeah that's based really cool. on other people's experiences or not you know like mm -hmm. sometimes from a talk you can catch a little thing and boom you know by the way i really love your background is that uh blink lines uh yes work, that's, no? that's probably work. <laughs> <It's Joanna's> work. <laughs> yeah it's really nice really uh, nice really good work you, you should follow her by the way it's really good work that she does thank you <laughs> <laughs> dude so man let's um let's start dude um first of all fabio he did uh, our joy music video we bless his mass joy music video and recently a new earth music video um and joy in particular i want to uh do you a question i i think i know the answer but it's to check also your uh mm -hmm. your perspective on it okay and for people to also know that it mm -hmm. well yeah uh, so what did you want to capture in that music video and what was the concept behind it because basically yeah it's like joy is a strong like title and it's a strong mm. like so what was like yeah what did you want the to feeling answer? yeah like um yeah i think well first of all i always felt very touched by your music 
I think, from the first time I've heard it. And um, I also remember hearing it in a time where I was a bit like confused with myself and and, and, and not confused, but I was like in waves, you know, and I remember that your music always just kind of put me in this very joyful place. So, so I've always wanted to do, um, do some video for it. And when I've heard joy, it just kind of, you know, it just, it just kind of sank to me. And um, yeah, and I, th I thought it was a good opportunity to, to collaborate on something together. But the, uh, so the, it, what I really wanted to try and do with the resources we've had, with, which were very little, was just to kind of, you know, portray the, that's, that feeling that people have in their lives that they're a bit stuck or that they're a bit, you know, like this, this dark clouds that are kind of around you. And then that is just a decision to kind of flip that switch, you know, and it's a decision to go from <clears throat> being really low and very negative and, and, you know, very pessimistic about the world or about your life. And then to just, you know, just flip it and be joyful and find the beauty in life, you know, and it's, it's really a decision. You can choose to look at the hard stuff or the difficult stuff and which you should anyway, I think. And, and, um, but you can choose to like dive into it and, and let it paralyze you, or you can choose to see that, but still, you know, find the beauty that, that surrounds you. And obviously, especially in, in our times now, I know it's, that's quite a big task uh, <laughs> with everything that's going on. Um, but I think that's a different subject. We can get into that at some point, I guess. But um, yeah, so it was just really about portraying that moment. And obviously uh, at the time I was living in Berlin, and I and I and you were living in London, so I, I kind of visited you in London, and we did all that playback stuff, which was very nice because we've we've you know we've got we teamed up with Thanos. Shouts to Thanos! Oh yeah, yeah. Thanos. <laughs> big Great Thanos! Guy, <laughs> and yeah, you know we just had some DSLRs, and at the time, I, you know, I, we didn't have any big cameras or anything. It was just like it's just like, you know friends doing a as a. a a music video as you know as professional and as, as best they can um but yeah like we had the ronin the stabilizer and we had you walking through sweet. london and i've always wanted to do something like that just to you know just uh and i remember we talked about that a lot of times just like the man with the guitar walking through a city no permissions you know no yeah. big budgets <laughs> I no clothes people people are like what the fuck like, there's a guy in the background that you pass him and he goes like eh, eh. Yeah. <laughs> some asian guy is funny <laughs> in camden uh, that was, but that yeah was... we just kind of wanted to use the um you know the 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 conditions we had uh, the natural lighting conditions we had we were lucky it was sunny the whole time and then we shot a lot of blue hour stuff as well which was really beautiful um yeah, and so it started like that. And then I remember I went back to Berlin and I just picked up a couple of my friends um, and I just shot some little scenes with them, um, some actors, some dancers, nah, and put was, it together. And that was, yeah. That was actually amazing. Oh, let, me, let me check the hello, good memories of Porto. Hey, it's, uh, yeah, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> nah, cool. Find that joy. Oh. Man, I remember when you added those those things because it was after like the Berlin shots was after the London shots, and when I actually saw the the final result was like was yeah <laughs> was like a step up like that part of like the dancing part mm. was like amazing. It's like where like the for me the the music video just explodes, you know, and mm. um and talking about dancing, we yeah. should move on to the next music video you produced, uh -huh. which is yeah. called uh, A New Earth, the song. And uh, that video was done in Vienna and it was mm -hmm. done under like the lockdown situation. Yeah, yeah, kind of lockdown <laughs> so, experiments. Um, <laughs> I want to ask you, brother, and because like people that didn't, still didn't see the, the music video, go watch it because Fabio did an amazing, uh, an amazing Thank work. You. Um, Thank you. Yes, Fabio. How was the experience of shooting in like an empty Vienna? In Austria? Yeah, uh, I guess first I want to we would talk about that once again. We had this song from you, and I remember September last year you had your EP out and Burden, and I listened to the whole album like on a loop almost. And the first song, and it wasn't even the main song, but the first song just really 
you know, spoke to me again. And I don't, I don't really, I don't really direct music videos much anymore. I mostly DP them, but obviously I have a very particular vision of in film, in filmmaking. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and so, and so sometimes, you know, I, I, I develop my own concepts as well. So, but I'm very, especially with music, I think I can visualize a lot of different stories and, and, and things. And with that song, A New Earth, um, I remember I was in Berlin again, and I, I was listening to the song the whole day and I've developed this whole concept with kids and the, the ghost yeah. boy. And it was all about identity. Um, you know, it was all about kind of neglecting the standards of society and being whoever you wanted to be, like uh, even under the repression of like, you know, schools and family and, uh, you know, conservative values and stuff like that. So that was like, I was very excited about that. But obviously, you know, we didn't get the, you know, we didn't have the conditions to do it. So we just kind of stopped it. So then when I um, jump forward to a couple months later, and this is like COVID lockdown happening. And I was, um, I moved to Vienna uh, during those times to focus on some projects and to, you know, be with my girlfriend as well. So we kind of dived in a couple of different projects together. And yeah, and this was the first thing that popped up. I was like, fuck, we have this song, you know, and, and uh, we're going to be locked in here. <laughs> so might as well just do something with it. And um and she's she's a, a she used to be a dancer and choreographer and actually co-director with me now in some projects as well, um, and so we just kind of you know we had this empty city. Vienna was in full lockdown already. The UK was actually still not. I remember we fl we flew on the fourteenth of March and it was everyone was still out of the streets. And in Vienna, in Austria, it was like totally shut down. Everything was was shut down. There was nobody in the streets. Supermarkets only open. It was like, wow, stepping into, I remember like walking in the airport in Vienna and everyone was like masks, two meters distance. And it was like, wow, this is like the new reality kind of thing, you know? And so seeing that everything was empty, we just kind of borrowed a camera from a friend and we just went out and started shooting some dance stuff with her. And then another friend of ours joined us and we kind of built, you know, a little story with it, obviously very, COVID and very lockdown, but we didn't know where anything was going. So we kind of just wanted to seize the moment and portray what was going on. And, and it was probably the only time I had the chance to do a very low budget music video in a kind of dystopian <laughs> empty city scenario, you know, which was insane because it was really, you know, we were in this big market at the Nash Mark and it was just, nobody was around, you know, we went to like big buildings, big, like, um, uh, bureaucratic or like old school Viennese governmental buildings and museums and everything was just empty. It was just police asking us if we live together and should we hang out together. If we were, so we're a couple, it's fine. You know, it's because it again, we had no permissions. We had no, um, we, we had no support from any production company. It was just me and her kind of going around and, you know, having kind of a very militant, all right, let's shoot in the morning. Basically, let's shoot basically, the basically the way we do music, you guys do videos. So. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think the way the way you make your music very much, you know, very, the process I think transpired very much in the way we made the video as well. Very punk rock. Very like let's just you know study. I just the only thing I did is like tomorrow's gonna be sunny. We should shoot at this hours because we'll have the best sun. And we went around. We studied where the sun was at the time of the day. So that the next day we would just get there and get the perfect setup, you know, so we don't need any crew, anything. We just need, we just got there. Sometimes it was like 8 a.m. and it was still a bit cold and, you know, and she had to dance with a, with a dress, you know, and it was like, you know, that's, <laughs> so we kind of, you know, so we did that. But um, yeah, and then obviously there was no rush, right? Because this song was not even going to be released. So we had like, we we had like two weeks almost to shoot it, which was very different from when I'm used to work. I'm used to plan, plan, plan. You yeah. know, you have the concept and the shoot is going to be one day and you have like, like the last music video I shot here in Vienna, which, because by the way, we already started working here again. So we've already, we're already shooting music videos again here in commercials. But, you know, I've never shot a music video again like that, uh, where it's just, you know, you, you kind of do your own rules and, and you take your own time. And, um, and that's liberating. You know, because normally it's one day shoots 
and the whole crew is there and whatever you don't get on that day you don't get and that's it most and, of the times you know and that that obviously affected the the final results of the video yeah yeah it did because we we were able to build on it um and it's it's quite a i mean i'm not going to say it's a masterpiece but it's quite a kind you know interesting um combination uh, of factors for me, for me it is man i, I <laughs> loved it I, I, the first time i saw yeah. it and it wasn't even the finished version i cried yeah. man so yeah it was really nice mm. it was but really you know nice. that's i think that's the thing that you and me kind of do together in in the combination quite nicely which is like very kind of emotionally touching pieces because the music is i mean it's it's also in your voice and in your music it's very it really brings up emotion not cheesy emotion but emotion you know raw emotion and i think uh, um i really see that when i'm making when i'm making a video for 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 you um thank you thank you very much i don't know who's loaf head uk i appreciate that yeah it's, um, it's a be very beautiful video and uh we have another comment here art is freedom art is freedom <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> sorry guys. um yeah, I don't know. And then I think it just gets, my sister cried as well. My mother cried, like people cried. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think that I, 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 yeah, I'm grateful for that. It's, you know, any emotion that comes out is, you know, is very welcome. And especially when it's done with so much, um, with so much love, you know, I think it's exactly. important. Yeah. And, and a little, a little uh, thing here. Yeah. Don't, don't. Don't ever feel ashamed to express any emotion because it's good. Like it's, yeah. it put everything out. I'm talking to everybody here, you know, and and it's it's that's that's one thing. Like the the experience uh, of like art should be something that gives you that experience of uh, laughing or crying or like feeling. That's why art is art, you know. Mm. Um, but yeah, so in, with with that statement, I, I would move on to the next topic because mm -hmm. what's the impact in 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 your opinion? What's the impact of a music video in a song? Like, why people ever thought about it, or like, <laughs> give me like your your <laughs> crazy opinion. Your your yeah <laughs> yeah. I think from a from a um, from a storytelling's perspective. Uh, I think it's the, uh, obviously music creates a picture in your head and it creates a story and it creates a, like a, you know, a journey of emotions. And I think everyone feels that and artistic people might feel that a bit more because it's their job to translate emotions into uh, visuals or movements or, or colors or shapes or tones. So, but it always creates that. So I think from the, from the beginning of, of music videos, or from the MTV Times, let's say. I think it's a very, it's a very refreshing and exciting process for a filmmaker that is trying to tell stories with pictures to break away all the standards of of what narrative means, you know, in long format. Because I guess in film, you you tell stories in a, you know, you're telling story, narrative in a very slow and kind of growing way. But in in a music video, you get to experiment with, uh, you know, non-linear storytelling yes. or or surrealism or, you know, abstract uh, narratives, abstract realities, and everything is kind of an experiment, you know, and it's very compact. So I think it's a very, yeah, it's a very exciting experience for a for a storyteller to engage in music videos because it really gives you you know, unblocks, it unblocks that uh, rules and standards of what storytelling should be all about. Um, and obviously, you know, it, you make something emotional always because the music itself already gives you such a line that, you know, you, you know, you, you have a, you have a great tool, uh, which is yeah, the use of the music and, you know, and you don't have to um, worry about, you know, I don't, I think you don't have to worry so much about dialogues or about, um, how characters communicate because the language will be mostly visual and uh, sonically and i think that's exactly. <clears throat> no, that's I, a great thing yeah i i, to I totally get and and but but like um like and and how how do you like what what's your um uh, th this is like the part of like i'm trying to get like tips out mm -hmm. of you. so people okay. who might want to start like shooting and filming stuff you know like uh, mm -hmm. What like, 
how how is your like process of like sometimes you go out in the streets and sh and film stuff or you mm, start like with not really writing or visualizing or like tell uh, us a little bit okay. about your creative That's cool. process yeah right. i think the creative process differs from what job i'm doing if i'm if i'm um let's i guess let's let's say if i'm if i'm directing which i have a couple of times the process is is a bit different and it goes a little something like you know I think you're listening. If if you're talking about a music video, for example, obviously you're, you're listening. Hey man, how you doing? <laughs> you're listening to the story. You're listening to the song, and and you you have some sort of a picture that comes to you, and you kind of and you're kind of hunting that picture. It really helps to bounce ideas with someone because you really like you start kind of visualizing what a story could be, what the song is telling you, and then I guess the other thing is just the the inspirations you have around you daily like um, the films you watch uh the paintings you like the photography that you're interested in that you know the, the instagram feeds that you're fascinated about other cinematographers work other directors work i watch a lot of you know commercials from like big production companies for example like i'm constantly also always trying to check out what's what's happening what's good what i like visually You know, and I think that builds into your treatment then, which is like a presentation of your idea. So if you're if you're kind of um, uh, pitching to a certain project, you kind of bring together a story and you bring together a couple of references. And that's yeah, that goes from from your own work or m mostly other people's work, what you 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 hope to achieve visually. Um, and then from there, you know, if you get the job, you kind of have to build on to that on onto that aesthetic. If you're a DOP, I think it's a bit different because you receive, you know, you receive those references and that inspiration, or you have like a story that a director wants to make, or and you and you see that treatment, uh, and you receive those those pictures uh, and, and th those in those references, and then I guess you take that and you have to then visualize your own um, aesthetic with already the kind of world that a director already built for you. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, yeah, it's like stepping in, it's like stepping in an, in an empty barn, but it already has a couple of like colors <clears throat> or a couple of things that he wants to play with. And I think then you just have to kind of be able to work together with the director to kind of achieve the best way possible, the language of the film that you're trying to make. Uh, I, and it's never random. It's it's never random. It's always. I mean, there's room for improvisation, but like I, I guess some people think that um, you take a camera out and you shoot stuff. That's a way, and I think that's how I, a lot of people start. But it's all about really uh, understanding what you're trying to what you're trying to tell and how you're trying to tell it with with what shots, with what colors, with what camera angles, what camera movements, uh, what you show, what you don't show, and when do you show it, you know, and I think that that plays a big role. In music videos, it's a lot of the times about crazy lighting setups and a lot of camera movements and just like playing with as many toys and as many um, things that you can. And that's, that's a lot of fun. <clears throat> This last music video we just shot, we, we had You know, that's exactly what we did. We played with a lot of camera moves and a lot of crazy flickering lighting colors and a lot of dancing again. <laughs> and and that's, you know, but that's fun. But I think the creative process is always about what kind of what, what's the concept that you're trying to that you're trying to that you're trying to make and what story are you trying to tell and, and with what uh, visual reference or what what visual language are you communicating that story you know and yeah and that's and that's then it's a long process to kind of try to direct that process into fruition you know as best right. as you can you know what i mean um so yeah and it helps to just to me it just helps to keep my mind constantly refreshed with visual language, you know, like good lighting, good photography, good cinematography, uh, good films, yeah, good paintings, but mostly good lighting, I think. For me, it's all about good aesthetic and, and, and good tones and, you know, and sometimes, or just a great fucking story, you know. It really depends where you are because I've also, the process of shooting a documentary, for example, is totally different from shooting fiction 
or 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 doing a a promo because you just kind of and that's where you just connect with a more raw um aspect of filmmaking because you just really follow a story and you follow the people and you try to control the light or control the angles or control the framing as much as you can with yeah. almost you know without having a team or you know without having your your lighting team or your camera team to do those things for you you know it's kind of like you so i guess in a way shooting a low budget music video like the ones the one we did is a similar thing because it's just me with a camera out there trying to tell the story and that's a very powerful thing to do um and i think when you do that and especially when you're experienced in working with bigger teams and bigger crews and sets and you know and loads of pre-production it really kind of brings you back to that to that raw essence of telling a story and what does that mean and how can you capture and that's really yeah it's a beautiful lesson again sorry i think i'm no, talking no. way too no much <laughs> it's, it's 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 amazing man you're doing a a, a wonderful contribution for thank for you the world. thank and you man, thank you so much mm. and uh, like an, another thing dude like for people that are like oh i'm going to I'm going to start doing this. Uh mm -hmm. I might consider this this as a a life option or what is You must be what, mad, but yeah. What is your tip? <laughs> <laughs> what is your tip because uh how's how's the situation of like uh mm -hmm. independent uh like cinema or film or like what's mm -hmm. the situation the current situation at least for you because you you can talk about it because you're yeah. you're one, you know. I think I think the I think filmmaking is is still a very strong um and very looked after um job let's say and it's a massive industry that you know has so many different uh crafts and tentacles that you can attach yourself to you know um because a lot of people think when they're starting out that they want to be directors you know everyone wants to be a director but then actually when you start figuring out <clears throat> the roles and every every aspect of filmmaking you might just find that actually you're a better editor you know or you're a, and or you're a better um a, a director of photography or you're a better costume designer i see there's a costume designer there or he was there for a second i think he left chris i still there hey chris <laughs> uh and we have a question here has has this been an inspiring period in terms of oh, 100% absolutely it's been the most prolific creative uh mad times because i've been just really i think i'll answer this and i'll get back to your yeah, to your yeah, question but, but this has been a great time absolutely because um i've had time to actually ask myself what do i want to do and but also what ha what's my responsibility as a filmmaker and um especially now as well with the black lives matter movement and with you know stamping on white privilege as much as we can as much as we should and what's you know what what are our roles and what's our voice in in and and how should we use it um so all this has been I've been questioning all this obviously but also it's just given me time to work on stories and concepts and projects and just you know other projects that i i didn't have the time to and and it's yeah it's just been extremely extremely creative so very good and i think that's what everyone should have this time was the time to really sink stop reflect uh and start like doing start understanding that you have um so much more power than you give yourself sometimes and yeah. that you have to use it you know for sure man but um going back coming back to your question i think a good way to there's always you know there's always going to be i think there's always going to be films and there's always going to be a filmmaking industry and especially an entertainment industry because you know human beings uh, human beings need to entertain their time so that they don't ask the right questions i guess which is a bad thing <laughs> but we want to distract ourselves and so you know there's always a need for um entertainment and for good stories so i think uh a good way to start as a filmmaker is to you know like in any other craft is to start making films i know that sounds like the most basic thing but but like uh, do you do you think like people should start like 
men, like with their phones and whatever is it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Phone May, or... absolutely. No, like you make, you can make films. You should definitely start with your phones and with basic editing software, you know, and, you know, documenting your life or documenting the stuff around you, the stuff that's important. I think right now phones have an even bigger power because phones are telling us our history. You know, we would have never been in this moment that we are now with Black Lives Matter and with, uh, with, the, with an attempt to end systemic racism worldwide if it wasn't for cell phones documenting the truth, you know, and what's the abuse that uh, black people suffer through the hands of government and through police in America. So, so you know, f that just shows you that at the end of the day, it's not about the technique, it's really about capturing capturing the moment in, in some instances. And obviously that's news and that's like sharing information. Yeah, because that's, that's another question I want to do. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what is the importance? Like, I, I mean, nowadays there's like filmmakers, there's amateur filmmakers, there's this random person films something. Mm. Is, I think like some of them are like documentation or, or, or like news yeah. or whatever. But isn't that still an art form because it's a film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I think, I don't know. That's the bigger question than we ask about what is art? Is everything art? Is, you know, I think some, some, some media expressions are not, I, I don't think they're considered art. I think art is anything that is, that has an intention or that has uh, an intention to, speak in a language which is not just the common language or which is not just random. You know, I think art can be random as well, but I think art has to come from a process of the artist's uh, self or, you know, communal observation and, and representation, you know, and I think that through that process, artistic uh, a piece of art uh, comes, you know, uh, uh, rises, you know, whether if it's, I think it's also just the dedicating your time into something and making choices yes. that kind of makes art as well. But um, I don't know, but it, it, and, and, but, but obviously I think the, the quality, the medium is not what defines what art is, definitely not, because you can make, you know, you can make a film, like I said, you can, you should make a film with your cell phone as many, as many filmmakers did. Uh, there was even like two features last year. Uh, Steven Soderbergh shot two features for Netflix on an iPhone with mini anamorphic lenses, you know. And at the end of the day, filmmaking uh, 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 is about telling a story through, through, uh, through the eyes of a lens and through a language of images, you know. And that's how, that's what filmmaking is. So I think when you're starting, all you really need to do is to have like a, you know, I guess a YouTube page and... Uh, <laughs> A couple of followers you know and and putting some some work out and and i think but i you know and that's understanding what telling stories with a language of of images means but obviously when you want to start moving into another level of um understanding the technique of filmmaking and how you can then improve your images i think you have to then be um make your way into finding a space on set you know and and, and trying to work with film crews that understand, you know, that work on a different level. I mean, I, I guess it's really good to start with your phone and making films at home and, you know, using your friends as actors and your family and stuff. And then once you start kind of understanding that language and what a lot of people do is that they buy a camera and then they start doing, um, I don't know, some small commercials or some videography for this and that. And that's cool, but that's also, a bit random at some point, you know, and I think we're kind of overloaded with that kind of content and that's not where filmmaking is. That's videography, I guess. And that's, but it's, it, I guess it's, it, you, know, you know, it's advertising in a level and the advertising bubble has become an even bigger thing since, you know, since, in, since social media has kind of changed the rules of everything. But I think if you really want to go into telling stories and narrative and working with actors and with the crew, I think it's important that you at some point go and work on, on a set on like a proper commercial or on a bigger commercial or on a TV show or, you know, stuff like that. And I think you start as early as possible. Like when you're 20, I've met Sparks on set uh, in the UK that are like 21, 22. And they're like, you know, they've done film school and they're like, 
ready to get their hands dirty on set and learn with yeah. the bigger boys, you know? So learn with the, with the directors and with the producers and with the DOPs and kind of get that set experience because that's really what's going to make you understand how making a bigger film really works. Um, and if you're not there, then you don't really understand because you're still kind of having, you know, and if you want to pursue professionally, I think that's, that's where the, that's that's the jump, you know, is to okay. is to learn how to behave with with bigger crews, um, with your lighting, you know. And I think most people start like that. At least most people I've met in the UK, they start with, you know, they start with doing. Let's say you you start with iPhone videos, and then you get yourself a camera, and you start doing some videography, and you do some events, some weddings, some things, some short films with friends, and, and then you consider yourself a DOP, but you're really not. You're just kind of like learning stuff. And I guess at some point it's important to go to bigger sets and work in the lighting department or work in the camera department. And then, you know, cause that's also a job, you know, and that's, I think that's where, that's where a lot of people then really um, find a way to work yeah. in the film industry, you know, and that's really strong because once you get in the film industry through that way, you don't have to be, you're not going to be the director in that job. But how it works then is that if you have like a, a good job as a, as a gaffer or as an AC and you're like just working on multiple projects as a focus puller or you're working yeah. as a camera assist and you're just seeing all this experience in front of your eyes. Like you're working, they're playing with, you know, all this lighting and all these cameras and all these things, all these techniques. So like you're learning so much by being on set, much more than you would doing your small videos for the small brands, you know what I mean? Like it's a yes. totally different ball game. And I think that's what's exciting is that once you start working with bigger teams, you really start understanding that you can make all these kind of bigger moves and you know work with bigger tools and do better shots. And for me, that was very exciting. For example, when I um, moved from the, my small camera into like working with bigger teams, bigger crews. And now that's, that's all I want really, even though it's still nice to go and, you know, do, do a very interesting low budget, uh, like the music video we did, but I think, you know, nothing, it's very different from being with a bigger crew on set and really making the big decisions. Um, Not exactly, man. and that's very exciting. Uh, uh Man, is that <laughs> dude it, it's it's been such a pleasure like talking to you bro because you, you really go like in detail in every subject and that's really yeah like, that's really cool brother i'm learning as everybody's learning as people that might watch this later on igtv and youtube also might learn uh there's another question here and a new project in mind um yeah i'm i'm shooting another music video at the end of the month for a uh, austrian artist but I'm only I'm doing that as a DOP, not as a director. Um, then yeah, I I was planning on maybe doing a, a small documentary about Alzheimer's in Porto this summer with my uh, with my grandmother because she's in in the terminal stage of Alzheimer's, and I think I feel a responsibility to kind of document that and try to do something <clears throat> something good out of it. Um, yeah, that raise awareness and. Yeah. yeah, I mean, not only that, but just to tell the story, you know? And yeah, yeah, yeah. See yeah. where that takes me. See, to be honest, see where that takes me. But I think, you know, I feel like, and that's the thing. I think at some point as a filmmaker, you also know when it's calling you, when the, the, some projects are calling you. And I think this one now is calling me because, you know, my grandmother is, might die at any moment, you know? And, and, and it's a big, you know, and it's a big issue that affects a lot of people. And it's very emotional as well, because my yeah. grandfather is still around and, and um, he's I very kind it, to her, you know, so it's, um, so that's one, that's one of them. And then, I don't know, to be honest, I'm kind of having a, I'm, I'm suddenly I'm having quite a lot of work coming my way here in, in Austria um, and getting connected with a lot of different producers and, and production companies. So I'm feeling like there's an opportunity here. Uh, and I'm kind of seizing it. So I don't know. I'm, I'm really open. Um, and I think as a DOP, that's kind of, that's, that's what you hope for is just to have, you know, a lot of directors or, or a lot of different people coming your way and wanting to work with you because they like your work and, and that's happening now. So, but also I'm co-directing with my partner and we're pitching constantly now for other music videos as well. 
and then hopefully soon me you know we'll do some crazy project with nelson again uh, <laughs> with you and we bless this mess uh with your new album hopefully um and i that i'm would looking be... forward to do that <laughs> yeah me too man me too that'd be amazing yeah. um as i as i do in every conversation mm -hmm. i i leave like a space in the end for uh people to express their their message to the world and to <laughs> your heart and whatever you want to express right now this is for you this is your platform it is mine and everybody so if you want to spread a good message this is the moment and <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't know. To be honest, I'm feeling very uh, mixed up lately because everything that's happening in the world has made me very angry um, and has made me, you know, this in, I've, I've, I think as many people at, at all to see the images that I've seen and to see how human beings treat each other. And that has made me very angry. But at the same time, I've, felt very uh i felt a very powerful energy from out of all of this because people really came out and they fucking you know they showed you that humanity is not going to you know vow down for you know for the old values and the old systems and i think it's very clear that you know uh that we have we have a bigger fight and and i think right now we should all really stand together with the black lives matter movement and try to try to fix that injustice that has been happening in america forever you know that's and that's and that's a big and, and not just in america in the uk and and i think you know we, everywhere. everywhere everywhere you know in portugal i think racism is is a systemic uh is a systemic invention that that's been like infiltrated in in yeah, humanity yeah. where they think that you know where white people think that they're sure. better than and, and you know then like my my father is brazilian i remember as a kid like yeah. being like half brazilian half portuguese i i had to take like shit because of that like yeah exactly. and my father maybe as well i remember of course like, i'm, I'm in sure school, you i'm sure like, you kids making fun of me because i spoke like with a slightly like brazilian accent yeah like yeah. shit like that so yeah, like, it's... and then they say, "Oh, come on, it's not racism; it's a joke." You know, no, it's, it's a like, joke. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, <laughs> you know, that's and that's the thing. I think, uh, I think, um, uh, white people have to kind of come to terms that they've had these privileges um, for a long time, and that it's time that we would use our voices to support, you know the other causes and i think you know and this is this is the time this is it should have been it should be a constant a constant struggle but unfortunately like we only get a certain certain buzzers to wake up hey emma <laughs> nice that you joined us <laughs> so yeah if, if there's any real message is that we we should really stand united against injustice and fight it with all our voices especially the ones of us who are privileged enough to not be beaten up by police when they come our way so yeah and we have a bigger responsibility then, you know, and we have to, you know, fight the good fight with, with all our brothers and sisters. Fight the power. Fight the power. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the police. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank you, it Nelson. A, a, it was an absolute pleasure having you here, talking with you. We covered a lot of ground. It was really nice because you, you went like in detail in all the subjects we were talking about. So, Thank you so much, Fabio. This I'm is, happy. This was yeah, great. Happy was helpful. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. And uh, I hope to see you soon as well. Yeah, man. I want to, to hug you. And, <laughs> and, Big love. And, like, do fun stuff together, man. Like. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. We should definitely go on uh, on, on the road in one of your tours uh, oh, at some sure, point man. soon. Or and, uh, do that. Do that man. documentary that we always wanted to do. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> brother. Okay, uh, brother. If you want to, if you ever want to come back and talk again on another subject, or if you feel that you want to talk about something that is like um, good for this kind of uh, program, just yeah, talk to me, and we'll we'll arrange another date, and we'll this this platform is for basically for everybody to get to know more about different subjects and stuff that might find interesting, you know.
everyone that joined and that stayed. Um, yeah, very grateful to have uh, you guys staying there and listening to us talk. I think that was, yeah, it's very humbling. So, and I hope you all have a good time as well. And uh, <clears throat> that, yeah, that you use this time to also reflect in where we stand, where we're going, and what can we do to make this a better ride for all of us. Bro! Yeah! <laughs> trip, trip, Brother, thank bah. you so much, man. I love yeah. you, bro. Um abraço. Um amor. abraço, amor. <laughs> tchau, man. Tchau. Tchau, tchau. Ah, this was an amazing talk, and for, for people that might be interested in, like, videography and filmmaking and doing videos, uh, this talk was really, like, informative. Uh, thank you so much once again, Fabio. Thank you so much, everybody, that is, yeah, being here, participating in these talks, uh, watching the, the videos on IGTV or YouTube. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, we just started a new week. And uh, this week, we have another week full of guests. And uh, I'm just happy to, uh, to basically do this another week. <laughs> That's why it's a weekly program. Um, but yeah, tomorrow, we're going to have Bernardo here. Um, speaking about the Gilman show and the shows, the other shows we did on the West Coast uh, of United States. Uh, he's going to talk with me tomorrow about that. Then on Wednesday, uh, yo, yo, Artur, what's up, brother? <laughs> uh, on Wednesday, we're going to have Scott, um, Scott Goodrich. He's going to give some tips on uh, how to build a DIY uh, home studio, like what to buy and like cheap stuff, but cool stuff to buy and stuff. Yeah. Um, Thursday, uh, we're going to have Bianca from Be Create. Um, and Saturday, uh, I'm going to have my cousin here from uh, Brazil. His, uh, the talk is going to be in Portuguese. Uh, and he's going to talk um, about like the Amazon rainforest and uh, the native um, population and uh, the oppression that is happening in Brazil. So it's going to be a cool talk in Portuguese. But yeah, the Portuguese ones can join in and, and be... Um, yeah, have information about the subject. <laughs> so thank you so much, everybody. And uh, see you tomorrow at five.